Multifamily versus single family real estate investing. Which one's better? It's been the argument for a long time and I'm gonna talk to you guys in this video about the most important things you need to know between both of them and let's find out which one is the better option. My name is Daniel Hale. I'm a real estate agent and investor in Ontario, Canada, and I help a ton of landlords with their real estate investing. So here's the things that you need to know when it comes to multifamily and single family. First, let's talk about the rental risk. This is, in my opinion, the biggest one. Single family home. That means you only have one unit, one house, one condo, it's a single unit. Which means you only have one tenant. Multifamily, you have two, three, four, six, ten, as many doors as you want within one building, which means you have multiple tenants. So the rental risk on single family if the tenant ever stops paying you rent, you as the landlord are stuck floating the entire property, all of the bills, all of the expenses, until you can get that tenant evicted and find a new one, which means you're gonna be out a lot of money. Now, multifamily, you have multiple units, multiple tenants. If one tenant stops paying rent, you still have all of the other tenants paying rent to help float all of the expenses and you're not in as big of a financial loss. So when it comes to rental risk, multifamily is the winner, single family is the loser. Tenants, this is another thing that's important. When it comes to single family homes, you're likely going to get a tenant that wants to stay for a very long time. When it comes to multifamily, if you buy units with one bedroom, two bedrooms, which is what I recommend, not three bedrooms or anything that's too big, you're gonna get tenants that will stay for two, three, four years and not as long. Now, why is this important? You're probably thinking, that's great, my tenant's gonna stay for a really long time, I don't have to worry about tenant turnover. Well, in Ontario or any country that has a rental control, for example, where we are in Ontario, it's 2.5%. So if I have a tenant in my single family home that stays for five to 10 years, which happens all the time, and I can only increase my rent 2.5% per year, you're gonna end up with a property that's a couple thousand dollars under market value because the market value rent has gone up a lot and the 2.5% simply can't keep up with that. So you have a property with a tenant in it paying really low rent that's not going to want to leave. So it makes it harder for you to make money and keep up with that value, which also presents future issues later. Now when it comes to single family, you have tenants that stay for two to four years, which means when they leave, you can bring the property back up to market value, which makes you more money and keeps the property at higher rents at all times. So when it comes to tenants staying for a long time, multifamily is the winner, single family is the loser. Issues selling the property. The next thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about, and you're probably thinking, why do I wanna know about this? When you buy an investment property, ever, ever, ever. I don't care if you're just buying it, you should still know what your future exit strategy is. It's an investment. Eventually you're gonna wanna pull that capital back out and you're gonna wanna make sure you have a good exit strategy. So when it comes to selling the property of a single family home, the end user, the person that's gonna buy this off you later is more than likely going to want to move in for their own personal use with their family, which means you have to evict that tenant, which could be an issue and an even bigger issue if they're at lower market value rent. So when it comes to selling that home, you could have a lot of issues and I've seen it time and time again, especially in Ontario. People sell their tenanted property, their single family home, and they lose 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars, 
tons, thousands and thousands of dollars when they sell their single family home because the tenant's giving them a hard time not wanting to leave or they damage it and they sell it for a lot less than what it's actually worth or they pay that tenant an astronomical amount of money just to get them out to give it to that buyer. And all this money that you put into this property, that you bought this property as an investment, doesn't become the return that it should be for your investment. Now, when it comes to selling a multifamily property, the beautiful thing about this, the person that is buying it is not going to be someone looking to move in. It's going to be an investor which means they're gonna want to assume the tenants as long as you keep that property at market value. If you let it drop down too much, then you will sell it for less as well. So that is a negative there. You gotta keep the value of it up. So the investor says, whoa, the money here is good. The cap rate is good. The net operating income is good. I can make money off this. That's the one I want. But the end user is an investor. So you don't have to worry about going through that eviction process. So there's pros and cons to both on this one. But when it comes to selling, you will have an easier time selling the multifamily property. Market risk. This one is huge. You must know this, especially if you were paying attention to the real estate market in the last three years in Canada. Things got slower housing prices dropped, there was a lot of mess. Now, market risk. The value of a single family home can be heavily affected by what the market is doing. The market starts dropping, the house starts dropping in value. Now you're probably thinking, well, what's the difference with multifamily? Here's the truth. Multifamily is valued off of how much money it is making, what the net operating income is. You should always be trying to get that net operating income up. If the market drops, you don't need to stress. Your multifamily property is not gonna tank because the value is in the rents. That's what the bank looks at. How much money is it making? What's the net operating income? That determines the value of your multifamily property. So when it comes to market risk, single family home is, can be a roller coaster. Multifamily property, take care of it, keep the rents high, you'll have no issues, your value will be good, and you'll make a ton of money. Management issues. Here's the thing, single family home, a lot less management because there's only one tenant, so they said. Multi-family home, a lot more tenants, but a lot more money, which means you're going to have a lot less stress paying for the management around the property. You have a single family home, you're paying a couple hundred dollars a month just to get somebody to come and cut the grass and do the lawn, which eats off of your profit, profit margin and you won't cash flow. Multi-family, you have a lot more rental income coming in. So paying somebody to cut the grass and do the lawn is not as much stress, but you will have things like garbage outside and certain things that you gotta maintain and keep up. So there's more maintenance on that multifamily home, but when you have a lot more income to take care of that, it's not as stressful. So there's pros and cons of those ones as well. Which leads me to my next point, the capital gain, how much more you are making. Here's the thing. Because multifamily properties are valued off of the income and what it's making, you can make way more money. Every time you increase the rent per unit, the property goes up in value. Maybe you buy the multifamily property and you put laundry into it or you put fences around the bottom lower level units so that the tenants can have dogs run around, whatever it is, it increases the value. You can charge more rent for that. Wherever you can add value, wherever you can increase the rent, puts more money in your pocket because the building just became more valuable. Single family home, you cannot do this. You increase the rent, the home is still worth the same amount of money. You put renovations into it, that does help, but only if you're selling it. The margin is not as high. You will also get a lot more cash flow from multifamily. When it comes to single family, it's extremely hard to get that to cash flow. And guess, unless you're getting it at an incredible price or you're putting a lot of money down. Now again, when it comes to the value of increasing your multifamily property, 
The other beautiful thing here is the refinancing aspect of it. When you increase the value of the property, you can refinance it and pull money back out of that property. And if you pull the money back out that you put in, now it's like having a free property, which is amazing because you got your money back and you keep the property. Now you can use those funds to go buy another one. So your goal should always be get that net operating income up, improve the property's value, refinance it, go buy another one. And this is how you can get tons of properties and you will make a lot of money. So when it comes to multifamily versus single family, I am a multifamily guy. This is what I recommend, especially for longevity, less stress, dealing with landlord and tenant board issues, making a lot more money. And on this channel, I do work with a ton of landlords and help a lot of them. And all the stress that comes from the channel is actually always from single family properties. Multifamily is more, how can you help me with management? How can you help me increase my rents? How can you help me make more money on this property? Refinance it, do it again. So. Let me know what you guys think, which one you've been investing in, which one you prefer. Happy to hear your opinions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.